Hi, and welcome to the IES SketchUp plugin video series. In this session, we're going to discuss using room grouping for faster translation of our SketchUp models into IES. In this example, we're going to use a thin walled model. However, you could do this with the thick wall modeling type. As we know, the way that the SketchUp plugin finds rooms is very different from the way that you would find rooms inside of Revit or Archicad. Um, essentially, you're looking for volumes inside of spaces. For a very large model, this can sometimes take a while to analyze. The two examples I have here are two different buildings that I've drawn. One is using the room grouping scheme that we'll be discussing, and one has not used this. So let's look at the first group to start with. The only thing that we've put into groups or components are the shading devices that are existing on our front facade. This model has been built using the thin wall modeling style, and none of the floors have been grouped whatsoever. In this case, the normal work workflow that we would follow, it was we'd simply bring up our groups and components. In this case, we have no groups, but we do have some components, and we want to make sure to set these as shade and save. Each time we analyze this model for rooms, it's going to run through and find volumes inside of the project. Okay, now that the model has found now that the IS plugin has found spaces within our model, we can see the room lists on the left-hand side. Once I close this out and go back to our regular model, if I was to make any changes to this, we would actually have to reanalyze all of the geometry that's visible. Um, there is no way of the plugin knowing if this geometry was analyzed previously or not, and this is why we introduced the grouping scheme, which can be especially helpful for very large models. So this is our second model. This has actually been grouped by floor. And if I just move into the second scene here, I can show you that when we're grouping by floor, each group has to contain all of the entities necessary to make an enclosed space. That means that each individual group is going to have a floor, a ceiling, even if these two groups are actually sitting directly on top of each other. The reason that this is actually speeding up the out the room finding process is that the algorithm does not have to search the entire model to determine if this volume has any bounding faces. It only has to search the group that we put it in. And this is going to allow us to speed up anal analysis quite significantly. And you can see each individual entity is in its own group. And what we're going to do is move these together and then perform our analysis. And remember that shading or elements that we do not want to be included in this analysis need to be excluded and set as such using both our grouping settings as well as our component settings. And here, if we want these to be included in our analysis, we're going to make sure that we set this to whole room. I'm just going to go in and set these to whole room, and then I'm just going to hit shade. And let's return to our model. Now that all the settings have been applied using the IES SketchUp toolbar, um, we've made sure that we've set all of our floors that we want to be analyzed as whole rooms. And these are set as such. Each of them contain all the surfaces that are going to contain a space, which is going to be necessary for the analysis. And then we're going to run in and find rooms using the IES toolbar. I'm just going to hit OK. And this is going to run much more quickly than the previous one that we ran through. Um, the reason for that is that it only needs to search for enclosing spaces inside of each individual group rather than searching that whole model as we mentioned before. Now we can explore our groups using this list on the left hand side much like we were in the other model. However, when I close this out and I return to my normal settings here, you can see that each individual group is locked. The reason that these are locked is that the algorithm, if it needs to find rooms again, is not going to go through and reanalyze any of these locked elements. This means that it's going to assume that no other changes have been made to that group and that its, its state is the same as it was when the previous find rooms was run. If we want to make changes to one of our floors, for example, let's say we want to decrease the ceiling height in this space, we're simply going to unlock it, 
we can go in and double click and maybe we let's actually increase this a little bit on this floor I'm just going to double click my surfaces here to bring up the height of the ceilings and close out my group the next thing I need to do because that group is no longer set using my group functions here I'm just going to bring up groups again and make sure that these are set up correctly so it is still set to whole rooms as I'm clicking through and it looks like good we still have our settings I'm just going to hit save here and now when we go back in and find rooms we're not going to have to reanalyze these spaces below so let's just run through that and I'm going to say keep current names And our room list is going to appear on the left-hand side. And for a very small model like this, you may only notice a little incremental difference, but for a very large model, um, maybe you're having 20 or 30 floors and you have hundreds of rooms, this is going to be essential in making these models translate very quickly and not asking the algorithm to go in and reanalyze the spaces when it's not necessary, saving you time and getting your models into the virtual environment or out to the toolkits for analysis quicker and easier.